Hey, hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Thakar Ki Paatshala. So how are you? I think you are getting trouble in solving the problem of block diagram reduction. That's why you are here. If so, then stay tuned until the end of this video and I will try my best to clear all of your doubts. Some of you have suggested me that I should do a video on how to solve example of block diagram reduction and find transfer function. So if you have any particular suggestion of which topic should I cover in my next video, then comment it down below. Your suggestion really make difference for me. So without wasting further time, let's start the discussion. For today, we are taking this example of block diagram in which we will find its transfer function by reducing it. This is the input and this is the output. You all know these things very well, just formalities. These are the gains of different different blocks of the diagram. So, in order to reduce the block diagram and finding transfer function, there are certain guidelines or we can say steps to follow. The first step is to find out if there is any block directly in series or parallel. By looking at following block diagram, we can say these two blocks are in parallel. So, we can reduce them to one block by rule number two. By the way, I have made one another video earlier which is about all the 10 rules of block diagram reduction. So go and check that out so you can understand this video easily. Link can be somewhere over here. Let's come back to this. So rule number two tells that if two or more blocks are in parallel, then we can add them algebraically and reduce into one. By applying rule number two in this situation, we can get the reduced version of block diagram. The two separate blocks of gain are now being represented by the one block in which the both gain are added by looking at the reduced diagram. We can easily locate the newly created block and the G1 block both now in series. So they can be reduced by applying rule number one, which is for reducing the two block in series and tells that if two or more blocks are in series, then we can algebraically multiply them and reduce them to one block. Now let's see what happens when we apply this rule for this configuration. So what we have done is that we have multiplied the gain of both the blocks and created a newer one. Now there are no pair of blocks which are in parallel or in series configuration. But if we move this summing point before this block H2, then these two blocks H1 and H2 will be in series. We can apply rule number 5 to this configuration in order to move the summing point before the block. Rule number 5 tells that. In order to move the summing point before the block, we have to add inverse gain of that block in the path of summing point. So as per rule, if we move the summing point before the block, we have to add inverse gain of block H2. After applying process, the configuration will look like this. Now H1 and H2 as well as G4 and newly created block are in series configuration. So for blocks in series, we have rule number 1 which I have stated earlier. After reducing the block diagram with rule number 1, we can get this. Now we cannot apply any rule directly. So to get proper configuration which we can reduce by applying rules, we will rearrange the summing point by rule number 4 which tells that we can interchange the input of summing point coming after one another. For this situation, we will move this summing point number 1 to here. After rearranging summing point, it will look like this. We have shifted summing point number 1 from here to here. We are not touching this signal. In the previous configuration, it was being fed to the summing point number 1. But if we move this signal to summing point number 2, then there will be no difference because currently what happens is that it is being fed to summing point number 1 and then it is going to summing point number 2. Also, there is no block in between these two summing point. So we can move it to summing point number 2. We are doing all these things because after that, this will become the feedback loop and we can reduce feedback loop to one block. Again, we are applying rule number 4 and which is the associative law of summing point to change this input from summing point number 1 to summing point number 2. Now this became the feedback loop. Rule number 2 is for blocks in parallel. We are assuming that the gain of this path is 1. So as per rule number 2, we have eliminated that block by adding the both blocks. Now we will eliminate this feedback loop for which we will apply rule number 3 that is for eliminating feedback loop according to which we can reduce as gain of block divided by 1 plus or minus multiplication of block and feedback block. Let's apply rule number 3 here. 
it will be reduced as this finally we have arrived to this last step for which we will reduce these two blocks these two blocks are in series so we will reduce them by rule number one here what we have done is we have multiplied the gain of both blocks by doing simple multiplication this is the final reduced form of the block diagram which we want and this whole gain is called as the transfer function of block diagram if you still not watched the video of all the rules of block diagram reduction then go and check that out thank you for watching this video i hope you have liked my video please visit again and give me opportunity to share my knowledge with you if you have liked this video then give it thumbs up share it with your friends so they can get also benefit from it and also don't forget to leave your valuable feedback in comment section also now you can like us on facebook link is in the description box below if you are watching this video on computer then you can find some titles of videos on the screen click on them to go to that topic or if you are using mobile device then you can find same in the description box below